Zoe's Fancy Cakes. I'm Zoe and today I'm welcoming a very special guest, Francesca from Sugar Coated by Francesca. What we're going to be working on today, Fran? Today we are going to be working on some mirror glaze cakes. We uh, we do we decided to do a nice um, Christmas design. So this is the mirror glaze one and this one is done with a velvet effect. And this is one that Fran made yesterday as an example for us. So let's get started. First thing we do is by measuring our gelatin. 90 grams of cold water. So what we do now is just quickly just mix it together. Now the second step we're measuring our chocolate and um, that's just normal Belgian chocolate. You can choose your, the chocolate you prefer and that is 555 yeah. uh, for, the, for this recipe. The next step now we have uh, measured 525 grams of uh, double cream. What we're going to be doing is to reheat it to 80 degrees. Generally when you start bubbling up we're pretty much there. As soon as you, you just don't leave it and you just walk away because it could easily overboil. As you can see now the gelatin is completely um, hydrated again so it's not in a powder form and that's exactly what you want. Just slowly because the, uh, the cream is quite hot it won't take long for the gelatin to dissolve. What we've done now is literally just putting our cream inside our chocolate and then just use a normal hand blender. I'm putting a slightly warm uh, lemon juice and just put it about 20 seconds in the, uh, the microwave. Right now what we're doing is we put our second portion of cream which is 600 grams for this recipe. It's preferably from the fridge if you can, uh, cold, cold cream. And what we're going to do now, we're just uh, quickly going to uh, whip it, but to a very light consistency. Right, we've um, literally whipped it for a few seconds and it's already gone like to sort of a good consistency. You can go lighter. Now, with our cream whipped, what we want to do, because the cream is cold, we just want to put it just a little bit to start with. Just give it a nice mix. And the point of doing it slowly as well is that you don't want to completely um, get your cream um, deflated. You just want to make sure that it still stays to the consistency that you've made. And this is my favourite part because I can eat this one right from, from the bowl. It's so <laughs> delicious. At this stage now, you can either use it like this, you can, and it's still very good. In this case, we have this lovely Sadashino paste. And this is, by all, by all means, is your preference. So if you want to have a very strong uh, raspberry flavor, you put more. If you want less raspberry flavor, you put less. Because we're going to be doing a Christmas wreath, we've decided to use this beautiful mold, which is jo Zoe's uh, kindly showing us and it's called uh, lobster tail. Um, so what we're going to be doing now, we're just going to pour our mousse inside our mold. It's still quite liquid, so it's quite easy to pour. This one, because it comes with a cutter, as I was saying, you just do it, uh, we've cut our sponge perfectly the same sort of shape, so I'm, I'm just matching the design. So now this one's going to go overnight in the freezer and it's going to be ready for us tomorrow. Right, now we're starting doing our mirror glaze and um, the beginning is exactly the same process um, as we did before for the mousse, which is making the gelatin. So it's exactly the same as before, but different quantities. So just follow the link for your quantities. Um, 55 grams of water. Next one, we, are, we have already measured um, 150 grams of chocolate. And to do a mirror glaze, you always need white chocolate. So we've got 150 grams, and the next thing I'm just going to put 100 grams of condensed milk. We have put our glucose already in the pot. Um, glucose quantities is 150. Same amount for caster sugar. And then you've got 75 grams of water. And then you just have to be careful that it doesn't overflow, because obviously you're working with sugar. It does when it boils, it will rise up. And once it starts boiling, quickly start forming like a like a white foam. And all you want to do, really, once the foam starts disappearing, um, then it's the right time to, to stop it. So you can actually just do it by eye. Generally speaking, when it's 100, 306, the maximum degrees Celsius, then, then it means it's ready. Now you start seeing it start boiling. You see the white foam start forming. 
and slowly this is becoming clear and you only go a little bit white foam on the side and that would be enough now as we've done before we uh, we've got our chocolate with our uh, condensed milk and now we're going to put our set gelatin in and then straight you want to put your hot syrup in that there as quick as you can normally and then what we're going to do now we're going to use our blender our hand blender and we're going to start mixing it together as we're doing the holly a reese actually i should say and we're going to be using food gel color in this case we're using this one what we're doing now we're just adding a touch of uh, titanium dioxide because um, it will help with the glaze to completely cover the cake so we've rolled out some red modeling paste and we're just going to cut a strip for our bow we're going to make a nice big red bow to go on our wreath i don't really want it to be too much bigger than about 10 centimeters so i'm just going to cut a little bit off either end let's see so i'm going to fold it together in the middle and i'm going to bend the middle bit like this pinching it together do the same on this side so we'll fold it in and then kind of back on itself so it's kind of a bit concertinaed at the bottom and then in the middle we'll do the same so we're kind of bending it like this we're going to push it all together in the middle like that if it doesn't stick you can put some water on then we'll use another little off cut to make a bit that's going to go around the middle let's put a little crease in it we're just going to wrap this around the middle pinch that off where it's a bit too big at the back now I'm not going to see the back so I'm not going to worry too much about neatening it up okay so we've just got a simple little bow hang down so let's cut another strip for the little tassel bits let's cut a triangle out the bottom of each one now these might firm up a bit before we stick them on we'll see and we're just going to fold them a little bit at the top of each one like we did with the bow just so it's got a bit more shape you can have them longer if you want just rolling out some white modeling paste is better than the fondant for this I'm just going to cut out some snowflakes we'll do a couple of bigger ones so we've got our plunger cutters so just press it quite hard and then i'll just give it a rub on the bottom just to make sure it's cut through and then we'll just pop it out sometimes it gets stuck if it does get stuck just put a bit of corn flour on the top of your paste before you cut them out let's have a go with some smaller ones as well now my icing might be a little bit thick for the smaller ones so we'll roll it out a little bit more we're going to melt the white chocolate 20 seconds at a time in the microwave so every 20 seconds we'll take it out and give it a stir so we've melted our chocolate and we're just checking the temperature is 29 so it's fine the chocolate is tempered Ooh. so we've just put the chocolate in the piping bag so we're just squeezing it into each of these now and this is just a cake pot mold isn't it that we've got here yeah you can use that a silicone mold as well for this kind of chocolate work they work fine they're easier to use than the polycarb ones so we're just gonna do the aim that we're just trying to do a few uh, Christmas bubbles so we're just tipping it out into the bowl that we now so that the hollow we're gonna have hollow chocolate bubbles I'm thinking we might need some different size bubbles as well for our yeah for our cakes so you're just scraping the edges now aren't you to yeah because this is a cake pop small so you will get in between here because it's got a lip you will get chocolate but it doesn't matter like they're semi semi hollow these ones semi hollow yeah <laughs> oh but you can use greaseful paper if you go one of those plastic mats as well so you just want to tilt it over so all the excess it can just come off of the chocolate just drip out so we leave that for how long uh, probably about five minutes and so the chocolate will start setting but some of the excess will come out and then to speed up the process you can put it for a few, few minutes in the freezer so we've had these in the fridge for a few minutes now I'm going to tip them this is where it worries me do I press the back? you can yeah I think I just need to release it all the way around oh. yep it's not very shiny <laughs> Obviously, if you use polycarb mold, the DM will shine. With a silicone one, you don't get as much shine, but they are easier to use. You can do them in any color. You just mix them with a bit of um, chocolate food coloring. We're going to do some red ones as well, or you can just uh, dust them with them um, with the chocolate yes. with, with the powder. With the powder, yeah. So you could use them either as half spheres, and we could stick them on straight away as half spheres, or we could stick them together, which Fran is doing now. We've heated up some metal. It's the bottom of a cake tin. 
only a little bit it, it doesn't take long for the chocolate itself um, to to melt we can color them up if you want to so I've got some different types of um, different metallics that I thought might look quite nice and all we're gonna do is just brush them just with a big soft brush straight onto our chocolates can you see I've got some smaller sized chocolate balls as well yeah. these have been in the freezer overnight so they're nice and firm yeah and we just need to take these out the molds now don't we yeah so the the best way of taking out the mold is trying to help the mold from the sides first oh yeah that's that's brilliant because uh, when this frozen you can see it's absolutely perfectly smooth and is it it's much better to work with the when the cake is completely frozen They look so good, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so we've got a cake tin without the bottom in that we're going to use for resting our cake on. Yeah. And um, our glaze that we prepared yesterday, which has been resting overnight at room temperature, we're going to reheat it twice at with 10, 20 seconds in the microwave, and then we want to put it on the cake. After the first tw first 20 seconds, we are just quickly stirring it just to loosen it up. And now it goes for the next 20 seconds. The glaze now just come out of the microwave for the second time and we're just gonna blitz it now. Okay, and we just need to put this on here, don't we? Which has got a hole in so that the cake fits on it. Just like that. So the drip will go down the middle into the hole. Yeah. Can I help you go up pouring? Of course you can. I might mess it up. So what I do, I just give it a bit of a wiggle so you get a nice um, consistency. Slowly but not too slowly because otherwise you finish Ooh. off. Yeah, just carry on. Is that right? Yeah, just carry on. Like sort of like a motion. Oops. I'm not sure I'm very good at this, Fran. Yeah, that's fine. Just I might have poured it all out before we actually get... Trying to do it, yeah, do not do it too quick because otherwise you don't get it up, up to the bottom. Is it going to the bottom? Yeah, this some will do a bit on this side. Okay. Right. I'm very happy with the way it looks, so just a little bit there. You haven't seen this on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were actually very is is actually a very good glaze because you do get the odd bubble, but actually just giving it a little wiggle again. It's all about wiggling. You can see the shine and everything else. That looks good. I'm impressed. Well done, Zoe, for your first is your first glazing. Yeah, first pouring, pouring the all important bit. So what we do now is just uh, getting rid of all these little drips. So you just gently scrape it off your spatula. So Fran's just putting it on the cake board now, just using the palette knives to gently lift it on. She's braver than me. We're now preparing the velvet effect, which is simply made by using white chocolate, cocoa butter in the same quantity and food colouring. So because we're using this one, we're going to add um, quantities of blue and green sorry blue and, uh, and yellow to do um, our green color we're going to do 150 grams to cover our cake uh, of white chocolate and 150 grams of um, cocoa butter next part we're just going to melt it in the microwave until it's completely melted and incorporated and then we're going to add our colors we're going to spray this cake now in the velvet effect that Franz just created for us and we're going to use a box So we're going to decorate this one first. I don't want to cover up too much of it, so we're just going to put some little sprinkles. We've got for Christmassy colours. Uh, we're going to put some holly leaves on this one. Just put some little pearls, sugar pearls on. So we're just dusting some red on some of the chocolate balls. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, and then we'll do this. The cold of that will that help yeah, stick it to that. There. Yeah. I reckon just some of these on. Sorry, I've taken over from Pop Farm. That's fine, not no, that that's what your bit that I wanted you to do anyway. Because you're the the decorator. Yeah, I think it'll look good. Do you think that one's a bit big? Should I go smaller or I think it would be nice probably all of them, like a bit of smaller bit of big ones. Yeah. 
So there they are, all made. Thank you ever so much, Fran, for coming and doing that. You're welcome. Now, these are still going to be a little bit too frozen, aren't they, for us yeah. to cut into at the moment. How long would you normally leave them before eating? You, once they're finished, you put them straight in the, freeze, in the fridge and to be honest, it don't take long, probably about an hour and they will be, um, they will be fine. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll cut into this one that Fran made yesterday. This one's just been kept into the fridge. Ooh, that looks good. And this one's just a vanilla mousse with a bunch at the bottom of this one. Yeah. Now the best bit. Thank you, yeah. Fran. You're welcome. Oops, this mine drops on the table. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so for those of you that have really enjoyed the video and like Fran's work, please do pop over to Fran's Facebook page and where else can they find you, Fran? Uh, you can find me on uh, pretty much all the social medias, but basically the search you need to do is uh, Sugar Coated by Francesca Falbo and the link will be um, below, You can so you can find yeah, me. We'll put the link below the video for you all. Thanks for watching. Thank you, bye. <laughs> You'll obviously get a Zoe and E in a second helping. And me. Probably go back in for a third helping because she's not had too much chocolate today yet. That's really nice. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.